All right, this may be a little hard to see, but what you're looking at is different organs in the body. This is for primarily the liver and how it reacts inside the body and all these little bulbs and so forth have chemistry in it. Now we come to the pancreas over here, which is another organ, and they all have enzymes, but this calls it out pretty good. Just think about this now, and think about this carefully. Every one of these layers all right, has a different chemistry. If you're inside, it's a different chemistry than if you're outside. All of this stuff has different enzymes that reside in the membrane, because these are all membranes. Everywhere you have a surface, it's a membrane. Simple as that. So you have to have different enzymes that live there to react with a different chemistry that's either mucus and so forth has to be out here. In there, I don't know what, maybe it has to be acid, maybe it has to be salt out there. There's all kinds of different chemistry. Let me just read you very quickly about the enzymes, which is what I've been talking about, of the pancreatic juice. Now listen to this. The acinous cells of the pancreas contain numerous zymogen granules made up of proenzymes, which are only activated when they reach the alimentary canal, which is the digestive tract. After being excreted inside the lumen of the pancreatic ducts, they reach the duodenum where the proenzymes have arrived from other enzymes and from duodenal substances starting their specific chemical activity. And then they talk about it catalysts and so forth, but anytime you talk about an enzyme or a catalyst, it's doing a serious, serious chemistry. If you want to read this for yourself, I hope you can focus in and read that. This is about the enzymes of the pancreas. And if you don't have the right enzymes, you're done. You cannot work with the chemistry that's coming into you. And it's so specific, all these different areas, and the enzymes... Every, every single different spot in here has to have some different chemistry because it's being protected from different types of, of toxins, mostly. You don't want anything invading you. And that's what a membrane does. It stops that. Okay, my friends, I said we're going to get deep into the microbiota. Well, that's what we're going to do. And this is things that are on and in you, your body full of microbes. Artis microbia. You can't see them, but they're there. Microbes. They're on you, in you. You carry more than a hundred trillion of them all by yourself. A hundred trillion. <clears throat> That's 14 thousand times more than the number of people on earth. Collectively, it's known as the human microbia, microbiota. Now, I've been working on this for quite some time, and we have had some pretty good results by supplementing the normal digestive system with probiotics and a couple of little bits of chemistry, because here's what happens. <clears throat> Every single thing that you put in your body, 100%, is immediately touches some kind of bacteria, because you're 100% loaded with bacteria. You see, what is it? 100 trillion of them. They're everywhere. Now, any, they're everywhere on every surface, inside you and outside you. When I say surface, it's the membrane that protects you from that layer that wants to invade you. And it protects you with a slimy layer of mucus. You know, you got mucus on you, and you have oils on your skin and so forth. Dry skin leaves you cracked and open for invasion. Moisture and slime, I mean mucus, you know, it's good for you. Now, what does the bacteria do? And the bacteria lives, it loves it, that mucus, it loves it. And there's a layer called the interstitium, 
where the bacteria live. It lives in there and it has flagellas on there, little spinny things. They spin 100,000 times a, se a minute, something like that. Zip! They drive these things like motorboats through your body. And they create enzymes. And enzymes are little chemistry sets. We're going to go over this in a minute. I'll show you what they look like. They're proteins, very, very exotic. And they have to be perfectly exact. And only one specific species of bacteria can make that exact product. And that's all its life does. That's all it does. It eats and makes those bacteria, the enzymes. And now, the enzymes are literally the stuff that goes out and creates products. It, the enzyme breaks down food that comes into you and breaks it down to where it's usable by you or it reconstructs it into a form of these proteins. I'll show you that. <clears throat> now there's hundreds of thousands or there's at least tens of thousands of different species of these enzymes which are bacteria. And there's trillions of them total in you. Now, you have to have a lot of them to do this job. And they have to be saturated throughout your body. If you're getting damaged and that bacteria that you should have is for any reason being killed or attacked, well, you're, you're going to have a weak immune system. So, because the bacteria, they're the delivery vehicles, literally. The bacteria grab a hold of molecules and zip, they shoot them up there and squirt the whatever they need, mucus or um, an enzyme, catalyst, whatever it is. And they drive right through this interstitium, and that's where you get attacked. That's your, that's your no man's land. You don't want anybody getting through there that you don't want to get through. But in your intestines and so forth, you have to let stuff get in, otherwise you're going to not be able to digest it. So there's got to be stay out and let in. And who does that? The chemists and the bacteria. They're the chemists. They say, whoa, 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 you got too much zinc, get out, stay out, stay out. And it says, no, 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 I'm coming through. And I say, whoa, 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 I'll squirt some mucus on you. And they get the mucus guys and take care of it. They chefs, they make a food for you. They say, oh, whoa, whoa, there's some stuff going by, a little guy chunks of steak. <laughs> they break down the stuff and bring it in through these, what they call uh, ion channels, I believe. They're construction guys. They do the construction. They change your bones. Your bones, as you grow, they have to go out and reconstruct them. They clean up all the debris in you and all the nasty stuff and the stuff that dies. Something's got to clean it up. So you, these are tox. These are guys who are the toxic guys. And then you know, they, everybody has its own little region that it lives in. And I'm going to give you an example of how specific this is. Now, if you have weak numbers of these bacteria, you're going to have a weak response. That's what I would think. And a lot of people have weak immune systems. They cannot fight off stuff. Is it because they don't have enough numbers? Or is it because they're totally wiped out of a certain bacteria? These are the kind of things we could find out, because this all comes out through your poop. We can check fecal samples of this and find out pretty much what's, what's available and what is not available in your body. Okay, I just came across this a while back, and uh, I thought this was highly encouraging. Species-level analysis of the human gut microbiota with metataxonomics. Well, what does a species-level mean? That is literally the exact type of bug. Now, let's take ants. Yeah, but, but hundreds of different types of ants, I probably, I don't know. And they all sort of have the same looking characteristics, but one of them eats wood, and one of them eats grass, and one of them, well, that type of thing. Same thing in your body. Exact same thing. So if you don't have the correct species, and you have to digest a certain cellulose or some fat, and you can't do it, you're in trouble. Or if you don't have enough of the, to, to get it, to um, break it down, you'll have some effect. It may not be devastating. So you're always living with some unbalance. You're not, you're not able to react to what you're taking in. So a lot of times you'll miss the nutrients that you need, which means you, you, you're going to try to take anything you can get out of anything. And that's what leads to weight gain. It also leads to probably arthritis and all different issues if you don't have the right microbiota bacteria to digest 
and break down with enzymes and catalysts. These specific products that you eat, you're not going to be healthy. Now we count on the EPA to take controls of this stuff, and that's fine if they do the job correctly. I have no problem with that. However, what I want to see is an across-the-board test. Which very, very, very simple. All you have to do, and it's non-invasive whatsoever. You might need samples of feces, urine, oils that are on your skin, around your eyes, in your ears, whatever. It's just like they testing you for COVID now. You just, just take a little swab of this, a little swab of that. You throw it in the vials and off they go. Somebody looks into it and says, okay, here's the normal sequence of events that we find in all the people that don't have skin cancer. And here's what we find in people that do have skin cancer. I'm telling you, you, you will find very likely that the bacteria that was supposed to be there to break down the stuff in the lymph nodes can't break it down. So you get toxic lymph nodes, then they get damaged, they break through, and then you get that cancer, right? It invades right into your bloodstream, and then it's all over. All right, this is really very, very simple. Enzymes are proteins. They help speed up chemical reactions in our bodies. And when I say speed them up, like a rocket ship, they can create like a million breakdowns of other products in a second, something like that. It's absolutely amazing. Enzymes are essential for digestion, for liver function. And all, everything in your body is done by enzymes. And the only thing that makes enzymes is a bacteria. Enzymes in our blood can also help healthcare providers check for injuries and diseases. Yes, because if the enzymes are there, there's a reason. If they're not there, there's another reason, and it's your bacteria is bad. I'll try to remember to link to this article, but it says, What health conditions can enzyme problems cause? Metabolic disorders are often the result of not having enough of a certain enzyme. Bacteria create that enzyme. If you have a weak amount of that bacteria, you don't have enough of that enzyme. If you have none of that bacteria, you're really in trouble because you have none of that enzyme. Because that's the only thing that can create that enzyme. Now, the parents can pass them to their children through the genes. Pretty much it is in the genes, but it mostly it's through the vaginal canal and feces and everything associated to the mother giving birth. And they shouldn't wipe that stuff off real quick. Some examples inherited metabolic disorders include these kind of things. Those are inherited, they say. Well, we'd have to look into that a lot deeper. Then you got other conditions related to enzyme imbalances, Crohn's disease, everything in your stomach, 100% of your digestion. How are enzymes tested, used to diagnose health conditions? They should be finding out what bacteria are missing. And these are the kind of bacteria products. These are enzymes. This is a solved protein structure holds answers to metabolic disease that afflicts infants. Metabolic, which is your metabolism, your, how you digest and use the foods coming into you. And kids don't have a digestive system. So they need they, some kind of enzymes to do everything for them. And that's why it's good to breastfeed and, and, and to have a lot of bacteria as the kid is born. That's, when they're in the womb, they are basically sterile, is my understanding. As they come through the birth canal, they get all those vaginal juices, and feces is very good, you know, and the mother has to have all of those products in her to pass on. So hereditary, yeah, it's hereditary. I can go along with that. And then there's a, there is other hard-coded, you know, genes that, you know, give you traits. All right, but these illness things, I think, are more related to not having the correct ability to withstand the new environment that they find the baby in.